going to uh, change my fuel injectors in my 1999 WJG and I'll be using Bosch 12 hole injectors for better economy and fuel atomization and maybe a bit of power. Um, my Jeep's done 120 odd thousand and I would like to fix them up or clean them. Um, but I purchased some better ones from eBay and gave them a clean, which you can see in another clip. Um, I'll do a, a quick show. Um, I've already done half the engine disconnect on one side, so the quill will be a bit quicker. Um, because you don't need to see how all of it's done, just once you know half, you know the other half. Um, so, here we go. First, a drink. Cheers. Okay. Now you probably have a, a box air cleaner, um, which I just have this. I've already loosened it, just to get it out of the way. It makes it a bit easier. Okay. The easiest way is first to get the um, coil packs out of the way. Plug that. I won't use my air tools because they're very noisy and you probably won't hear anything I'm saying. So I'm just going to use hand tools. So you, you will have to remove those box air cleaners, the factory air cleaners first. Um, when I purchased this vehicle they were missing so I put on a one of those kind air cleaners. If you feel you need to you can always pull the plugs off the throttle body. motors are very deep underneath the firewall. They're little 10 mil bolts, 10 millimeter. Okay, now before I do, I'll rubbish falling into the spark plugs holes. I'll put them back where I've got the plate. But a uh, air ramp performance um, power wire here, yeah. as you probably noticed. And number four. Okay, I've got a bit of nostalgia here. A bit of nostalgia from the old days. I'm a nostalgic bloke, you know. Here you go. The old cars had them on the rocket covers. I use them to hold my fuel rails.
makes it a bit easier. Now, a bit of gasoline will run out. That's just, that's fine. Now, I've got a cable tie here. Basically, you just need to take them out of the way. You don't really need to remove it completely. You can leave all that connected. Um, there's no problem leaving that on. So, basically, they should just pop out like this. And there's the old one. And this will be it. The new one. Okay. Since I've replaced the seals when I put them in, I will use some of them. Like so. Honestly, it's not a big job. Most people could do it in a couple of hours. After this is done, I'll clean all the gasoline out and give the engine a good clean. Now basically, putting them back in is the reversal of taking them out. Apart from when I bought this car, the clips were missing. But I've purchased some and they clip over here. You will have to pop them off with a screwdriver when you do it. Um, basically, you put a bit of, make this wet with gasoline or a bit of light oil, pop it in, push the rail back on, and that's it. Um, I'll show you how to do that, but for now I'll pull out the other side. Okay, I've put most of the lifters back in apart from two. I've got a little bit of thin synthetic oil that I've got left over from when I did the oil change and I just rub that on the o-rings just makes it a bit easier for them to go in you put that back where it came from and you click on the plug make sure it clicks Not too much oil. You just get dust on it and get dirty. You don't want a dirty engine. There you go. Wipe it on your good t shirt.
Beautiful. They're all in now. Now it's time to put this piece on. It's a little bit awkward with the camera there. Stuck on a bolt. Make sure all the plugs are out of the way. Otherwise we'll be buggering getting them out later. The cables. You have to take it all off again. Okay, they're all lining up. With the new rubbers, this is not easy, and this vehicle being so tall, let's get a crate. You also have a 10 mil nut, little bolt. Just for now, one other side. Like I said, make sure all the plugs are out of the way. You don't want to get them stuck underneath the fuel rail. If they're not going on properly, make sure double check the plugs laying underneath. There we go. That one just went on nicely. the fuel injectors in. We still have to put the coil packs back and put these clips on. I had not shown you how to pull them off because this car never had any when I purchased it. They basically go on like this upside down and you should be able to like when they're on get a screwdriver and just Flick them off. Hard to show you. Whoops. fingers. There you go. It just locks the clip onto the injector and the rail. Then basically what you do, um, pop these in, plug them in, tie it, put all these cables back in and plugs put the air cleaner back on and you're done. Um, if I've left anything out or you're having problems with something just let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But that's basically how you change the fuel injectors in a V8 4.7 Jeep.
Here on the fuel rail, before you get starting and start cranking it up, there's a valve. It looks like a large tire valve. You you unscrew that and expose the valve tip, which looks like also like a, a large tire valve. And you press that little centerpiece to let the air out. Now all the air is out. What you do now is you turn the ignition on. See the 121,000. And the fuel pump will only run for a few seconds. And you turn it off again and you press that little valve button in the center and more air comes out and you keep doing that, repeating that system until gasoline comes out which means your fuel rail is primed I mean, it could be a different way of doing it, a better way, but that's the way I know it. Okay, um, that would take about five or six times. Um, otherwise, apart from the air filter, I believe I have connected everything here. I don't think I've missed anything. Don't forget to put the earth wires back on at the, on the fuel rail. Okay, um, I will finish bleeding the fuel rail and then we shall start it up. Okay, um, I've finished everything. Uh, I still need to put a cable tie on here. Um, I've finished bleeding the fuel rail. Uh, I think that's it, so I'll give it a go. Make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Finished now. All I've got to do now is pop on the air cleaner. Yeah.